featured in this issue. Edgar Allan Poe, Simon Whistler, The Book of Paul by Richard Long, Personal by Lee Child, Venom and James, House of Broken Promises, and music courtesy of the Atomic Bitchwax. born and raised in the zombie capital of the world, Monroeville, Pennsylvania. In 1984, I became a teenager, binging on MTV and heavy metal, leading to an obsession with black t-shirts and mullets. I played in bands for 25 years, telling stories through songwriting. Now, I'm a writer and public speaker, enthralled by everything horror and dark fantasy. I've appeared on Amazon's bestseller list alongside my childhood idol, Stephen King. I'm Jay Thorne, and this is Dark Arts Theater. Welcome to Dark Arts Theater. I'm so glad you're with me. I'm your host, Jay Thorne, and I've got some great things in store for you. You know, recently I went to the first annual Cleveland Comic Con, and I have to tell you, it was quite an incredible experience. And as I was walking around the big floor and looking at all the exhibits and all the guest speakers, I sort of think back to my own childhood, and, uh, and two things that kind of stuck out, uh, st stuck out for me you know, growing up in the late 70s and into the 80s. And there were really two elements of my childhood that, that the Comic-Con just brought me right back to. The first one was this role-playing game known as Dungeons and & Dragons. And uh, if you're going to want to geek out on this, uh, you'll, you'll remember it. Uh, basically, it's a game where you... Uh, it's a board game, but there's no board. Uh, you have someone that runs the show known as the Dungeon Master or the DM. And really the DM's job is to create the adventure for the characters that are playing, the friends that are playing. So many, many afternoons spent in my parents' basement with my friends. Uh, I'd been the dungeon master, drawn it out on a map. You, you would sort of draw out the, the adventure on a map and move the characters through. And then uh, you would have a set of die that you would roll. And that would determine sort of what happened to the characters and how many points they would lose. And... Uh, you know, as, as a pre-adolescent boy, it was, it, was, it was pretty entertaining. And I have to admit, uh, probably no surprise to you, my favorite part of that was being the dungeon master. Uh, I loved being able to create the story and unroll it for the rest of, the, of, of my friends. And then as, uh, as I got a little bit older and uh, transitioned from the 70s into the 80s, uh, music really became a big part of me and my, my identity, uh, my, my pastime, all my spend money went towards it. And uh, it was really common at, at, at that time to make mixtapes. So uh, if you don't know what a mixtape uh, was, I don't think they still exist, uh, but a mixtape was a cassette. And uh, what you would do is you'd sit down with a, a boombox that had a dual cassette deck or you could record it off a CD um, you could even record off the radio, although you always had the DJ talking over everything. But the idea of a, a mixtape is that you would take your favorite songs and make sort of a playlist for, for your friends or possibly for girls if you had some 80s hair metal ballads you wanted to include on there. Uh, and I love doing that. I love sort of picking some great songs, great material, doing the math, uh, figuring out how many songs were going to fit on a particular side. You had 45 minutes on a 90-minute cassette, so you had to you have to take that music all the way up and not cut off the, the end of the song. So that was great fun. Uh, so as I sat down and started thinking about this show that I'm creating for you, uh, I thought, wow, here I am in 2015 and I've come full circle. Uh, or I've never left adolescence, however you want to look at it. Either way... Uh, Dark Arts Theater is going to feature me, and I'm going to be your mixtape-making dungeon master. So I'm going to roll out stories. I'm going to uh, I'm going to introduce you to some new music, some of my favorite music. Uh, I'm even going to be doing some collaborations with some of my friends, some other artists. 
some authors that have been dead for a long time. Uh, you'll have to stick around to uh, see what that's all about. Uh, but all of this is going to become dark arts theater. And so I, I hope to bring you some really interesting stuff and hope you enjoy it. Uh, really, the show is going to be is going to be for the fans. It's going to be for people who love heavy music and, and horror and dark fantasy. So I need to hear from you. Uh, if you like what you see, please, uh, you know, give me a rating on iTunes. Uh, hit the thumbs up on the YouTube uh, subscribe. That's going to be how I determine how, how much more I do of this. I love doing it and I want to do it for you. So please uh, let me know. So again, I'm Jay Thorne. This is Dark Arts Theater. Hope you enjoy the show. Mind blowing. Not my words, Stephen King's words. This is the book of Paul by my friend Richard Long. And Richard uh, came to me last year and said he was going to be doing sort of a high-end book trailer for the, for the book of Paul. And he knew I was a musician and asked if I would be interested in helping out with some of the sound design. And of course, I was absolutely in. Uh, Richard's from New York City. He's a really cool guy, really nice guy. Uh, kind of, we kind of struck up a friendship. And uh, so I contributed some of the sound effects and some of the, the sound bed you're going to hear in his trailer. Now his trailer is not your typical book trailer. Uh, if you're a fan of books or book trailers, most of them are sort of animated text, uh, sort of like a glorified PowerPoint in a way. That is not this. Uh, Richard casted this, uh, professional actors, professional editing. Uh, it's a stunning book trailer and it, it, it looks like a movie trailer to me. And if you haven't read the book of Paul, it is extremely disturbing in a fantastic way. So I would highly, highly recommend it. Um, what else is there to say about it? I mean, Stephen King said the book, the book was mind-blowing and uh, it's well worth a read. It's very cinematic in how it's written as well. So Richard told me he did sort of really short chapters, really pun punchy action. Uh, fantastic. Uh, can't wait for the next one. So here is the book trailer for The Book of Paul by Richard Long. Enjoy. I remember everything. It's what I do. I watch, I listen, I record. I see all these people, but they don't see me. I hate this gift sometimes. Sometimes the visions are so clear, it's almost like I'm in the same room. I could see everything. I could feel everything. Their hearts beating, pounding. My head pounding in a queasy echo. My feet running to the bathroom to heave up all the hate churning in my guts. Why? Why should I care if they screw each other's brains out? It all began when, well, how did it really begin? When I met Rose? Or when I saw her and Martin in a soft, soft sheets? You see, they were never meant to be together. And they were certainly never meant to stay together. Paul chose me to keep those opposites from joining, from fulfilling their destiny. Paul. Yes, Paul. Paul is the story. A story that has been told and retold at numberless firesides for countless centuries until it was finally faithfully recorded into the only volume of its kind in existence, in the book. The book is everything. If I could read to you from its pages, everything would become so clear. But Paul would never allow that. We would never allow that. So instead, I must tell you the tale as it was told to me, the story unraveling thread by thread. Just do me a favor, please. Don't tell a soul. This sonic intermission featuring the Atomic, Atomic Bitch Wax.
Next up, I have an incredible music video for you. It's one of my favorites because it's so simple and straight and in your face, and it really conveys the energy and the vibe of the band. Uh, it is called The Hurt Paid My Dues by House of Broken Promises. Uh, this, is, this band is a Small Stone Records band. Big shout out to Small Stone. They're great. Uh, Scott's been really, really cool to me. Love Small Stone. Go buy some records from them. The Hurt, uh, it's one of those straight up just riffy songs. Uh, these guys clearly from the high desert in California. You'll see that in the video. Uh, a three piece. Um, there's a lot of lineage here. Uh, I'll leave the history lesson to you. You can go find out. Uh, Mike and Arthur and, and the guys in this band, uh, go check them out. Dig around. You'll find that they've got their fingers in a lot of great stuff. But this particular one is House of Broken Promises. This is The Hurt.
The first story I have for you is one of my all-time favorites, Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven. Now, technically, it's a poem, but it's very lyrical and it's musical, and I think for that reason is uh, the reason why it appeals to me. But I wanted to give it to you in a sort of a new and different way. Uh, so I found some really creepy music by uh, Incompetech, Kevin McLeod. Uh, add a little bit of sauce to it, put my own stamp on it. Uh, I asked my good friend Simon Whistler of the self, uh, the rocking self-publishing podcast and one of the best uh, ACX narrators out there. I asked him to give me a nice dramatic reading of it, put all that together, and uh, hopefully you'll hear this poem in a, in a new and different way, and I hope you find it engaging. Uh, so that is, uh, this is The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. The Raven, written by Edgar Allan Poe. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered weak and weary over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. "'Tis some visitor," I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember, it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vanity I had sought to borrow, from my books a crease of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore, for the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels named Lenore, nameless here forevermore. And the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrills me, fills me with fantastic terrors never felt before, so that now, so still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, "'Tis some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door, some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. That is it, and nothing more." Presently my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. "'Sir?' I said. "'Or madam, truly your forgiveness I implore, but the, the fact is I was napping, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door, that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door, darkness there, and nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken, and the darkness gave no token. And the only word there spoken was the whispered word, Lenore. This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word, Lenore. Merely this, and nothing more. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning, soon again I heard a tapping, somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is someone at my window lattice. Let me see then what thereat is, and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment, and let this mystery explore. Tis the wind, and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter, when, with many a flirt and flutter, in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obeisance made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with mien of lord or lady perched above my chamber door, perched upon a bust of phallus just above my chamber door, perched and sat, and nothing more. Then this ebony bird, beguiling my sad fancy into smiling, by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore, though thy crest be shorn and shave thou, I said, art sure no craven, ghastly grim and ancient raven wandering from the nightly shore, tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's Plutonian shore, quoth the raven. Nevermore. Nevermore. Much I marvelled, this ungainly fowl, to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little relevancy bore. For we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door, bird or beast above the sculpted bust above his chamber door, with such a name as Nevermore. But the raven, sitting lonely on the placid bust, spoke only that one word, as if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing further then he uttered, not a feather then he fluttered. Still, I scarcely more than muttered, Other friends have flown before, on the morrow he will leave me, as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, 
evermore. evermore. Startled at the stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken, doubtless, said I, what it utters is only stock and store, caught from some unhappy master whom unmercifully disaster followed fast and followed faster till his songs one burden bore, till the dirges of his hope that melancholy burden bore of never, nevermore. But the raven still beguiling all my sad soul into smiling, straight I wheeled a cushioned seat in front of birds and bust and door. Then upon the velvet sinking I betook myself to linking, fancy upon fancy, thinking what this omnibus bird of yore, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gaunt, and ominous bird of yore meant in croaking nevermore. This I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining, with my head at ease reclining, on the cushion's velvet lining that the lamplight gloated o'er, but whose velvet lining with the lamplight gloating o'er, she shall press, ah, nevermore. Then, methought, the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censer, swung by seraphim whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch! I cried, thy God hath lent thee, by those angels he has sent thee, respite, respite, respite and nepenthe from thy memories of Lenore. Quaff, O oh, quaff this kind of nepenthe, and forget this lost Lenore, quoth the raven, nevermore. nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil. Whether tempest sent or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore, desolate, yet all undaunted, on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted, tell me, I implore, is there, is there balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore, quoth the raven, nevermore. nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, by that heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore, tell this soul with sorrow laden, if within the distant Eden it shall clasp a sainted maiden whom the angels name Lenore, clasp a rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore, quoth the raven, nevermore. nevermore. Be that word our sign of parting, bird or fiend, I shrieked upstanding, get thee back into the tempest and the night's plutonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken, quit thy bust above my door. Take thy beak out from my heart, and take thy form from my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore. nevermore. And the raven, never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting on the pallid bust of Pallas just above my chamber door. And his eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming, and the lamplight o'er him streaming throws his shadow on the floor, and my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted nevermore. nevermore. <laughs> I'm pretty critical when it comes to book trailers, and that means I don't like most of them, even my own. Uh, I don't think book trailers necessarily translate the way movie trailers do, uh, but I've always been a big Jack Reacher fan. Uh, horror and suspense and thrillers are really sort of closely associated, so I read a lot of uh, mystery and suspense and thriller, and I've been a Lee Child fan for a long time. And uh, when I saw this book trailer, I thought, wow, uh, 64 seconds or so, really different. Uh, different and it's raw and it, uh, it, it connects with you emotionally. So not sure if you're a fan of the Jack Reacher series. Um, if you're not, you need to get into that. Uh, but this trailer is, is really unique and uh, it's very well done and yet it's very simplistic and elegant. Uh, so I thought I would show it to you. Uh, so this, again, this is the book trailer for uh, Personal, which is the latest Jack Reacher novel from Lee Child. Enjoy. I'm Lee Child and I'm here to say hi to all my readers around the world and to tell you a little more about my new book, Personal. Personal starts out with an assassination attempt against the president of France in Paris that fails because the bullet does not break the bulletproof glass that's protecting the guy. 
but the shot was from such extraordinary range that the security services around the world know there's only four guys in the world that could have attempted the shot. And one of them is known to Jack Reacher. He arrested him a long time ago, uh, sent him to prison, but Reacher hasn't been keeping track of the years, but obviously time ticks by and the guy's served his sentence and he's out. Reacher caught him once, can he catch him again? That's the story. It turns personal in several different ways. Uh, you've got to read on to find out how. This sonic intermission featuring the Atomic Bitchwax. When I first moved to Cleveland in 2004, uh, I knew I was going to form a heavy band, and I hadn't met Angus Khan yet, but the, but the first person I did meet was Joe Fortunato. Uh, he is the founder and uh, guitarist for Venom and James, and when I went down to see them play down at the old Peabody's, I knew that was the type of music, that was the type of crowd I wanted to be associated with. Uh, since then and over the years, uh, Threefold Law, my old band, and Venom and James have shared a stage many times, gotten to know all the guys in the band. They're really great guys. And when I was thinking about music videos that would appeal to fans of Dark Arts Theater, I immediately thought of Venom and James' Make No Mistake. Now, I don't want to give too much away because the video is really good. And, uh, and if you're a fan of horror, I think you're going to like it. Uh, Joe sort of fashioned the music video after some classic horror films. Uh, they're out of Kirtland, Ohio, which has its own sort of uh, weird and bizarre and, uh, and somewhat dark history. Uh, you should check it out. And even the name of the band, Venom and James, uh, is something you should look up. And again, I don't want to spoil it for you, but you should definitely check it out. Um, this came out uh, maybe about five years ago, something like that. Uh, Venom and James played Vakken. They were, uh, did, did great stuff over there. Um, they're still playing around the Cleveland area right now. And, uh, and this video is just a standout. It's, it's, it's really sort of an iconic, I believe, music video that takes heavy music and horror and puts them together in a really, really cool way. So, uh, with that being said, here is Venom and James with Make No Mistake.
Well, that's it for issue one of Dark Arts Theater. If you're wondering, uh, I'm setting these up in a way that they're like magazines. So this is volume one, this was issue one, and uh, each new episode will be called an issue. Uh, as I mentioned in the opening, if um, you could give me a rating on iTunes or uh, some feedback on YouTube, that would be a great help. Uh, I am really all into this. I'm passionate about it. And uh, the best way you can ensure that more episodes are created is if you share it with people who you know or would be passionate about it as well. Love to hear from you. Show ideas, topic ideas, interviews. I've got lots of stuff lined up for you. Uh, but if you have any feedback, uh, I'd love to hear it. So again, uh, I am Jay Thorne. Uh, you've been watching Dark Arts Theater, and uh, don't be afraid of the dark. Embrace it. The music in this issue provided courtesy of The Atomic Bitch Wax. You can find them at www.theatomicbitchwax.com. Volume 1, Issue 1, dedicated to Mr. Borey.